Okay, so the Apple financial model now contains operational, working capital, fixed assets, and capital forecasts. Uh, and we now need to put corporate taxation into the model. Now, if you're just starting this exercise, you haven't come from the last exercise, you can download the starting model by clicking the download starting model button at the top of the page. Otherwise, keep going um, and just make sure your numbers are up with where we're at by, by getting your exam answered. Okay, so corporate taxation is a complicated one again. Um, it's one of those things that is easy to model simplistically, very hard to model properly. Um, I've been in meetings with heads of investment banking teams that have said that they don't think that more than 20% of their teams actually know how to model assets properly. When we're talking deferred tax assets, liabilities, etc., most people basically fake it through their analyst years and then hope they never have to do it again and then say, oh, I'm too important to model. But being able to model tax is pretty important. Now, we've got some more advanced tax training um, on our website for those that want to understand things like DTAs, DTLs, tax timing differences and all this sort of stuff. I'm just going to give you a quick overview of corporate taxation now, and then we're going to model the core parts of it, which is tax expense, tax payer, tax payable. Um, so basically, in real life, companies keep separate books for tax and for accounting purposes. Their taxable income can often be quite different to their income in their income statement, which is their accounting income, due to things like different depreciation, tax and book depreciation, and things like revenues and expenses that aren't assessable or deductible, like, which create things like permanent differences. And, and you end up with things like deferred tax assets and liabilities. A deferred tax asset will come from something like a tax loss, where you will make a loss in a period, and instead of the government unfortunately giving you money back, they just say, listen, you can roll, you can carry that forward and use it in the future. And, and, and up until you use it, that creates what's called a deferred tax asset, which is the most common, deferred losses are the most common type of deferred tax asset. You also have deferred tax liabilities, which are things like where you accelerate depreciation. So your income says you're depreciating $5 million, for tax purposes, you've done 10. At some point, that's going to unwind because your, your book depreciation will eventually be higher than your tax for that asset. So that, that liability rolls off. That's called a deferred tax liability. These are complex things. Um, if you want to model tax properly, you should look into, um, you should look into the, the complex examples and, and, and models on our website and go through the formulas. And there's even some advanced training on this. Today, we're going to focus predominantly on how you'd model tax in just a basic three-way model. And that is that you'd basically assume um, your taxable income is your net profit before tax, um, and therefore you'd assume your tax payable is your tax expense, which is your tax rate multiplied by your, um, your net profit before tax. So when you do it that way, things get quite simple because you can basically look back and say, our oh, tax expense last year was 20, our net profit before tax was 100, effective tax rate was 20%, and then you can say, oh, let's assume we pay three quarters of our tax during the year, so we have a payable of one quarter of whatever our tax expense was. Mm -hmm. And that's how we're going to model it in this model. So when you do it that way, you end up having tax expense, just like interest expense. Then you have tax paid, which may be different to your tax expense, just like interest paid, which can be different to what you actually incurred during the period. And the difference becomes a corporate tax payable liability on your balance sheet. So we're going to, re we're going to really simplify things. So for the purpose of this analysis, we're going to ignore tax losses. Um, Apple doesn't seem to ever make a loss, so it's not really a problem there. Um, but if you did have tax losses, you would have to carry them forward and offset them against offset them against future income. Which, again, in the, the complex example we have at the end of this of Apple, the more complex example, I should say, we haven't done a really complex example, but um, the, comp the more complex example does have tax loss capabilities in there. Um, as for deferred tax assets and liabilities, you can probably get through your whole finance career without really understanding them. Most people do. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to understand them properly, there are more resources than our site to look at that. So with... The, with Apple, let's look at their income statement. So if you go to the income statement, you can see they refer to tax expenses provision for income taxes. Now, the reason they call it provision for income tax is to make it clear that that's not their actual tax payable during the period. It's the provision they've made for it from their accounting treatment of their tax. And that's where you do have big differences between tax expense for someone like Apple that has like enormous numbers of people minimizing their tax payable payments mm -hmm. um, and their actual tax payable where they often won't pay much at all. So the other issue is Apple's made up of a huge number of different entities that pays tax in different regions. So their consolidated financial statements are really a simplistic approach to how their taxes actually are, which is why modeling it quite simply is probably suitable when you're basing it on the Form 10K. So their provision for income tax, which we're going to call tax expense, for 2020 was 9680. Now, based on their net profit before tax of 69091, uh, 091, um, that implies an effective corporate tax rate of 14.4%. As I've said, that's a massive simplification. That's what we're going to do for this. Um, tax is really fun if you want to learn how to do it properly, but it takes time. And it, it took me about three or four months when I was in banking to get my head around it. Now it's easy, like most things, but most people never go through that. 
In most cases, depending on the complexity of your model, you might not need to. But the way we're going to model it today is the really basic way of modeling tax, which is you take your opening tax payable, you add your tax expense, you subtract your tax paid, and that's your closing tax payable. So you can see that T account type structure coming through like it does like it does with interest expense, mm -hmm. like it does with, 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 with lots of different things where you have an increase in an asset or liability from, from a revenue or expense, and then you have a payment or a cash receipt that, that reduces the liability. And that's where I always say to people, the balance sheet only exists as a result of differences between you know, you know, revenues accrued and expenses incurred and cash received and cash payments. If, if you ran a business that was purely cash, your income statement and your, and your cash flow statement would be identical and your balance sheet would be your bank statement. Mm -hmm. But because of all these weird nuances with accounting treatments and matching and accrual accounting, you have these things going on. And tax is a, is a supreme example of that where you have, ta you have your, your, your financial report, accounting tax reporting, you have your tax, your tax reporting over here, and then you have assets and liabilities that reflect the differences between those. So it's really complicated. So we're gonna focus purely on tax expense and tax paid and go from there. So let's start with, first of all, we're gonna start by putting an opening balance sheet tax liability of 2420. So let's go to opening balance sheet. And for corporate tax payable in cell J19, let's put in 2420. Now that number right there is just being calculated as 25% of their corporate tax expense. Mm -hmm. So we're simplistically saying, okay, Apple's corporate tax expense for, for FY20 was 9680. Let's assume that was actually what they had to pay. Um, and let's assume they paid quarterly and they hadn't paid their last installment yet. Mm -hmm. And they're going to pay that this year. Simplistic, but it works for most businesses. Um, so that's simplistically how we've done this, right? So what you end up with there is if you go down to the forecast assumptions, we've got our corporate tax rate, we've put in 16% just based on mm -hmm. our effective tax rate calculation. We're just keeping it simple. The percentage tax paid during period, we've put a 75%. So again, we're assuming they're paying tax quarterly um, and they're sort of one quarter behind, which is not unrealistic, right? So you see the assumptions we've put here, tax expenses assumed to equal um, net profit before tax multiplied by the corporate tax rate. Um, tax payable is assumed to equal tax expense in each period and does not provide for tax losses or deferred tax assets and liabilities. It's important to note that stuff when you're modeling tax simply because it's fine to assume them away like you do mm -hmm. in most things in economics. But but it's important to state that. Otherwise, people are going to go, well, what are they doing with tax losses? But you know, you just say, I'm modeling Apple. I don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so what we're going to do here, therefore, is we're going, to, we're going to just look at what this will result in. So if you look at the forecast for, for FY21, their forecast net profit for tax at the moment in the model is 66,150, so 66 billion. Um, and therefore, you result in forecast tax expense at 16% of 10,584. Mm -hmm. Assuming that 75% of that is paid during the F FY21 year, the tax paid will equal 10,358, which is 75, which is because that equals the 2,420 on the opening balance sheet, plus you're paying 75% of the 10,584 which is your new tax expense through the period, which is your tax payable during the period. Mm -hmm. So that's your 10,358, just like we did with uh, debt interest expense, okay? So so basically the corporate tax payable, therefore, um, at the end of FY21 will be 242646, which is gonna be the, the tax expense or the tax payable during the period, 25% mm -hmm. of that, okay? So that's a $226 million increase from the opening balance sheet corporate tax payable of 2420. So if you look at how that looks from a financial statement impacts perspective, our tax expense is going to be 10,584 during FY21. Our tax paid is going to be that 10,358, which is the, the opening balance plus 75% of the mm -hmm. tax expense. Um, and, and our corporate tax payable is going to increase by 226. And you'll see the, the tax expense comes through. It's part, it's part of profit, net profit after tax now. That goes down and reduces earnings, whereas the tax paid reduces cash. And the payable obviously shows, well, hold on a sec, we did we actually increased our tax payable, so we didn't actually pay that 226. Mm -hmm. So we had five eight four we had ten five eight four here. We only put cash through ten three five eight. So the rest remains a liability on the balance sheet. Yeah. Okay, so let's go and put this through a very similar process to what we've done with a lot of other things. So let's go into our uh, income statement. And first of all, just add tax expense. So go to row 23, and we're just gonna put tax expense as the heading in B23. And then we're going to go to, yep, J23, we're just going to multiply net profit before tax. So negative net profit before tax, because this is a cost. Negative J22 multiplied by our um, our effective tax rate, so our corporate tax rate of 16%. Mm -hmm. So we click that and press enter. Cool. And then just make sure that's included in net profit after tax by making it equal to J22 plus uh, J22 to J23, sum J22 to J23. That's it. Great. Great. 
And triple that, five, double six. Triple five, double six, and then increasing to 58, 885, yep. and FY25. And we're getting close to finishing our income statement now. So that's our tax expense. Now the balance sheet obviously isn't balancing. Um, we put out we put out our, our tax payable, didn't we? Our corporate tax payable. Mm-hmm. Yep. So now we need to add our corporate tax paid to the cash flow statement. And this is another one of those painful calculations, like we did because we're embedding it all in the financial statements, like we did for the interest expense. So mm. if you go to our cash flow statement, go to row 22, and just put as the heading in row B, column D, corporate tax paid. And what this is going to equal to is it's going to equal to the, as you said before in the prior exercise, it's going to equal to um, our tax expense, which is our tax payable. It's going mm-hmm. to equal to 75% of that because we're paying three quarters of it during the period. Plus, it's going to equal whatever was outstanding from the prior period, which again, we could do using referencing that it's sort of circular. We could do using the prior period closing balance sheet, mm-hmm. uh, closing balance on the balance sheet, but instead, we're actually going to grab, okay, we're going to take the prior period in the first period, we're going to take the prior period. Uh, income tax, pay, corporate tax payable. And after that, we're going to take the prior period unpaid amount by taking the prior period tax expense and multiplying by one minus the percentage paid during period assumption. Yep. So let's build this up slowly. So first of all, let's start by taking the, the proportion of the interest of the corporate tax pay expense that's paid during the period. So mm-hmm. this is to equals the income statement corporate tax paid. It's already negative, so we don't need to subtract it. So equals income statement J23. Yep, so, the, so the tax expense. Yep. Yep, multiply by our forecast paid during period assumption, which is forecast J48, which is the 75%. Yep. And press enter on that. Just make sure that comes in. Yep. Yep. And that gives you our, what is that number there? 7938. Okay, that's great. So now we need to add to that. In the first period, we need to add the opening balance sheet corporate tax payable. So yep. let's do plus if open brackets J7 J, equals J one. dollar seven equals one, which is the first period equals one in the counter row. J7 equals one, then negative the opening balance sheet corporate tax payable amount, which is in J dollars J19. Yep. J19, yep. And then otherwise, it. otherwise, we're going to take the income statement, we're going to take the prior period income statement, income statement, income statement tax expense, mm-hmm. which is in income statement I23. And we're going to multiply that by the prior period, one minus the prior period. So multiply by brackets. One, one minus. minus the prior period assumption assumed percentage paid during period. So I forecast I48. Yep, I48. Cool. I48, and then we close two brackets on that. Cool. Cool. So copy that across, and then load the traverse formula tool again just on the second period on K, on K22. And notice how we, as you go across, the, the calculation is, the, is, is literally going to be the prior period tax expense multiplied by one minus the prior period 75%. So what that's doing is taking, it's taking 75% of the tax expense for, for that, for the, for the year two, for, two, for FY22, mm-hmm. and then it's taking the prior period, so it's taking one minus 75%. And the reason why we're taking the prior period assumption is because they could change those assumptions each year. They don't mm-hmm. always have to be 75%. So that's going to grab that prior period. So, so our corporate tax paid is therefore going to be a corporate tax paid. And make sure you include that then in uh, cash flow from operating activities. Yep. Notice that tax is is obviously an operating expense. Like like debt, it's it's a cost of the business to to operate the business. So we just add plus twenty J twenty two to that, yes. and then we should end up with you should end up with cash flow net cash flow from operating activities going from six six two four four. Yep. Increasing to seven two two five four. Correct. Okay, and that's and that's your corporate tax paid. Now the balance sheet still doesn't balance. Why? Because we need to get the payable in there. Exactly. We don't have corporate tax payable on the balance sheet. So we've put our corporate tax paid in the cash flow statement, our tax expense on the income statement, but the equation we had to get to is opening balance plus expense minus paid equals closing. Mm-hmm. We need to put the closing in. Okay, so let's go to the balance sheet in position 2B of the table of contents. And in row 27, in B27, let's put corporate tax payable. And then go across. Now, in this case, corporate tax payable, as we said, it's the prior period's corporate tax payable plus tax expense minus tax paid. So it's, you'll see a very similar flow with all these exercises is, is you, your assets, when you're modeling them directly in the financials, which, I, as I keep saying, is not best practice, mm-hmm. if you did this with a tier count, it would be a lot clearer because what you'd do is you'd have your, your you'd actually map them out on three, three rows, you'd have four rows, you'd have your opening balance, you'd have a row for your tax expense, a row for your tax paid, and your closing balance would be the sum of opening plus tax expense minus tax paid. And then you kick that out. You kick it out, mm-hmm. and then you put that in the financial statements. We're doing this all in the financial statements, which is which is filthy, makes makes me a bit <laughs> sick, but, but for this exercise, to have actually built it all out and then linked it in, 
you know, it's pretty painful. Double the time. Double the time. So we're just doing this to teach you the fundamentals so you never have to do it this way again. Mm-hmm. And that's, as we keep saying, the, the, the example model at the end, the more complex example, shows how this should be done properly. But it's exactly the same logic. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's put this formula in. So we want to say, first of all, I want to say it's got to be the prior period. So if the period number equals one, so if j$7 equals one, if the period counter row number equals one, then take the opening balance sheet J19, which is our corporate tax payable. Take that balance, yep, dollars J19. Otherwise, take the prior period, which is I27, sell the prior cell. So the prior I balance sheet I27. Yep, you can close that off. Great, cool. and that gives you the prior period. And then now what we need to do is we need to add tax expense to that. Now tax expense obviously is negative on the income statement, so we need to subtract the negative number. So minus income statement J23 tax expense. Uh, J23. Oh, you're on the cash flow. Oh, sorry. Go to the income statement. Yep, income cool. Statement, yeah. So go to tax expense, J23. And then you need to you need to and then you need to subtract tax paid, but tax paid will be a negative number, so which means you add it. Cool. So add the cash flow statement tax paid, which is cash flow statement J22. There we so go. you're increasing it by tax expense, decreasing by tax paid. Press enter. And then copy copy that across. And you just need to make sure that the total current liabilities includes that. So liabilities. You can, make that a you sum. can just make that a sum. Yep. Yep. Now that we don't have any gaps. J26 to J29. And voila, our balance sheet balances again. Fantastic. So, and after that, you should have net assets of 71,958 negative. 958, yep. And increasing to 52,769. Yes. Yep. So, so the interesting thing with this is you've now, so now, we're, now we've got, you'll see we've now got basically our, our, our financial model contains our tax expense we're assuming is equal to net profit before tax multiplied by mm-hmm. our tax rate so it's our tax payable and you'll see we've put that delay in there so when you see corporate tax payable on the balance sheet it basically means corporate taxes that were incurred in the prior period that aren't paid and that 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 relationship between the three financials tax expense on the income statement tax paid on the cash flow statement and the movement in corporate tax payable being the net of those two is just like assets where assets has an increase of capex decrease from depreciation here you have an increase where you have your corporate tax, your tax expense. Your tax expense actually is not necessarily your tax paid. Mm-hmm. But if it is, you wouldn't have a tax payable. But that's all we need to that's all we need to do for now. As I said, more complex tax on our website. But that's the fundamentals. And your balance sheet's balancing and we're ready to move on to other financial statement items.